It's time for Critical Sass. If you are new to my channel, Critical Sass is where we talk about new makeup releases. I use accounts like Point Click Vibes, Makeup on Your Radar, and Trend Mood One to look at the new makeup releases and discuss them. If you don't already follow these Instagram accounts, I highly recommend you do it specifically if this is the kind of content that you like. Not just my new makeup release content, any new makeup release content. These people do a lot of work to make videos like mine happen and we respect and appreciate these people. All right, it's been a while since I've done one of these. So some of the stuff I'm gonna talk about is dated. <laughs> just like me and my career. You know, just a little bit of a has-been mom. Let's get started. As you guys know, I'm a drugstore diva now. Basically, that's what's happened. I'm a drugstore girly. I love drugstore now. That's not like 100% true, but I've been dabbling and I've been impressed. Elf has released a couple of new things, some new bronzers, the primer infused matte blushes and bronzers, $7 each. I guess these are just some new shades and they had some other shades of these already because it looks like there's six in each and Point Click Vibes is saying that, I didn't scoot to the side, Point Click Vibes is saying that there's four new shades of each. I will say the bronzer range could be better, but the blush range, I think what I'm seeing here is that there's a couple of shades that are like a little bit nuanced here. It's a pretty good, I guess, expansion is what we'd be calling it. But that really light, the Forever Sunkissed bronzer looks like it would work really well for me. I'm not on a bronzer journey. I have so many bronzers. Every time I get a new bronzer, whether I buy it or in PR, I like to look at all my other bronzers and go, is it better than one of those? And I'm kind of at this point with bronzer where it's like, I'm very, very satisfied with the ones that I do have. I'm like, I'm not really inviting things in. Something would have to really blow me out of the water to claim a spot. And I just don't think Elf's gonna do that. I could see someone who's getting into makeup. This could be a good option. I don't understand the primer infused powder product. I guess unless you're applying it to your bare face with like nothing else on, like not foundation or anything, maybe that's helpful, but like, help me make it make sense. A little commotion for the sleeves. They're very noisy and heavy. Adept Cosmetics has released their Cyborg palette, $79. So I've not tried anything from Adept other than their uh, magnetic palettes, love. And I also had some older magnetic palettes from them, but the, the Infinity Stack palettes have resolved a lot of my issues when it comes to my single storage. So I really appreciate them for that, but I've never tried, never tried something from them. I will say that outside of this packaging is beautiful. And I think that's what I'm more attracted to. But when we get to the swatches, I get a little bit let down. Let me tell you why. I feel like in the palette, the two yellows in the bottom left hand corner, nope, bottom right. <laughs> if I ever had to teach a physical fitness class and be like, mirror, I couldn't. I couldn't. Also, I feel like a lot of fitness instructors who are good at their job are also bad at that. So anyway, it's something we all struggle with. Like, we all struggle with it. We all struggle with it. Okay, not just me, all of us, you too. If I see one comment saying that like, I can do, I don't care about you. I'm sorry. And that's fact. Wherever they may fall, the yellows are pretty disappointing, even on the lightest skin tone. They look neon in the pan and then swatched out. They don't look very impressive. And the gold is very yellow gold. It's not like a yellow. In the swatch, it looks more gold than it like it looks like a sparkly neon, which I don't care for. But I do like love these purples. And I do appreciate the depth of the purples. Like a lot of this, the shades look really pretty. They do. When I break it down for me, I have enjoyed slapping on a blue eyeshadow a little bit more recently, but it's still not my favorite thing. It's not something that I feel like, oh, I love blue eyeshadow now so much that I need to buy every single blue eyeshadow I've ever seen in the future ever. Not giving that energy at all, actually. Kind of giving me like mermaid realness, actually. So I don't know. It, it kind of reminds me of when I got into makeup because that was when we were like into like unicorn, mermaid, that kind of thing. I know it's like cyborg. It's pretty. I think they executed it pretty well. A lot of the stuff that's on the inside looks like what's on the outside very pretty. It's giving old Natasha Denona more expensive palette vibes. I'm fairly certain I've heard that they are, are magnetic palettes. So Kylie, 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 hey Kylie, may I call you Kylie? Kylie of Kylie fame. What is her last name? Kylie Jenner has released a fragrance called Cosmic. The full size costs $78, but there's a mini for $26. And I guess there's a middle size. I will say the bottle is kind of aesthetically pleasing. I'm not gonna lie to you, Kylie. You did that. It has notes of Jasmine, Blood Orange, Golden Amber Accord, Red Peony Accord, Vanilla Musk, and Cedarwood. That actually doesn't sound that bad. As you may have seen, we're dabbling a little bit of fragrance on my channel. I have to take into consideration these fragrance releases now. We have to talk about them. I don't know a lot about Kylie Jenner. I don't know her, her scent profile. I can't guess that from the images she releases of herself online, her selfie, you know, selfies and portraits people take of her. But I guess I would have thought she would have done something a little bit more basic. 
it the notes sound like they should work together. The price point at which her fragrance has come out leaves me a little bit concerned that's going to smell like alcohol first and then maybe smell like some of those things vaguely later. But I do appreciate that it wasn't like it's vanilla. I think it could potentially based on some of the notes maybe be shooting for like something like Baccarat Rouge 40 like an offshoot of that maybe maybe a dupe. I have this feeling that as I enter the fragrance world I'm going to get upset with dupes because I feel like a lot of Ariana Grande's fragrances are like supposed to be dupes of higher end fragrances. I'm not saying that Kylie is really trying to dupe anything here. I'm just saying potentially it could be at this price point with fragrances. Normally it's like, it's fine. I think it would be really hard for something at this price point to intrigue me enough to buy it. But I think she did a really good job with the marketing and I think it looks pretty. Rode. Rode is releasing blushes. They kind of been sneak peeked. It looks like they're coming for nude sticks gig. There's not a lot of info on these as of right now. Here's what I'll say. I said before, I'll say it again. Rode, some of what they do is really great. Love their lip balm. I'm sure it has some fancier name than that. And I also love their milky essence. The milky toner, whatever they call it. So good. The other stuff, not so great. Don't care for it. Not good stuff. Cleanser, which did not buy. I'm almost done with my cleanser. I think I'm closer to being done with my cleanser. And then I'm going to try the prequel cleanser. That's next on my list. So I'm not even going to try hers next because it comes in a squeezy tube. I do think that cleanser should come in a pump and I will die on that hill. And that is my platform. I didn't tell you, but I am running for president this year. And you can just write me in. Don't write, please, do, please God, do not write me in. Not that I think I would win. Don't do that. Okay, okay, okay. This is so boring and I'm like, oof, wow, what attempt. Just as a reminder, I'm on an eyeshadow no buy. Sorry if you are always watching my channel and you're like, okay, Tom, I get it. Anything that I like eyeshadow wise has to tempt me all the way into the new year. Okay. I just don't think that many eyeshadow releases are going to tempt me, nor do I think many of the eyeshadow releases that I might be tempted by, Shroom for Victoria Beckham, I'm looking at you, will still be around whenever I'm available, like available, when I'm ready, when I'm allowing myself to buy eyeshadow again. Shroom by Victoria Beckham. Shroom, I would like for you to be permanent. Thank you. I just, uh, Victoria, hi, big fan, big fan here. Make it permanent. I dare you. Don't be scared. I dare you. <laughs> Do it for me. Okay? Thank you. Victoria, I'm glad we had this chat. Let's talk about this release that everyone's gonna like roll their eyes. I'd be like, Tom, what is wrong with you? Makeup by Mario released the Master Matte, the neutrals, but it does look like cool tones and neutral browns. Story time. Story time. Hi, welcome to my channel. It's tangent time. One of the very first expensive eyeshadow palettes I ever bought was the Viseart Cool Mattes palette. I panned many shades in that palette. I love that palette. Something to keep in mind. I did not have as much makeup at that time and I spent so much money on it and I was in a different space with spending and appreciating things. I actually really, really appreciated my Viseart Cool Mattes palette and I loved doing some matte looks back in the day. I do like a little more sparkle now. You see them? I also had eyebrows at the time. I used some of the shades as I like to fill in my brows. I think brow powder is an underrated product. If you have full brows and you just want to fill them in a little bit more, brow powder I think is the way to go as opposed to buying any of those other things. Just my personal opinion. Love a brow powder. I think they're underrated and I think we should celebrate them a little bit more. Anyway, something to be said for a palette like this is it could be versatile. You could use it for many things. I love cool tones. I just love them. I think even when we are in our cool tone gig, when it comes to makeup, whenever the pendulum swings that way, we don't go far enough. We go neutral and then we stop. People are so scared of wearing cool tones. You, I love a gray. And this is me. I have a cool leaning undertone. So when I wear a gray, it doesn't like wash me out. It actually just like looks lovely on my skin. And maybe I'm just mad that it's like I can't have more things that just look lovely on my skin because everyone's afraid to add like gray into things. More gray. Love gray. We should celebrate gray. I don't know why we just don't celebrate gray. It's a beautiful color. It looks great on me. And what the makeup industry really needs more of is things that looks fabulous on me. Now I dabble in your bronze goddess little nonsense in the summertime. I dabble in it, but that's not my home. My home is gray. And what Mario has done here has kind of just put a palette together that really sings to me. And it reminds me a little bit of the Viseart Cool Mats palette, which they really recently released again, the full size and their petite palettes. And I'm going to tell you, buy the petite, like, if they're still available, I would still buy the Viseart ones over the Makeup by Mario ones. I'm curious now that Makeup by Mario has dabbled with a different matte formula, if these are any different. And I think I've seen some people already have this in their hands. So I just need to like, suss that out whether or not that like it's the old formula or the ethereal eyes formula because I like the ethereal eyes formula and then if I tried another palette anyway all that to be said I'm not buying this right now but I'm glad it exists people who have cool undertones can live their cool tone fantasy this spring okay and I also think cool tones look better with pastels that's my personal opinion just my opinion I love a light gray with a pastel it looks good looks good celebrate that celebrate that 
Okay, Guerlain is releasing the Kiss Kiss Honey Bee Glow Lip Oils. $40 each, comes in six shades. Honey infused tinted lip oil, light reflecting vegetal oils. Vegetal, this is the second day in a row where vegetal has come out of my mouth. And I don't like that. I don't like it. It's giving moist. It's giving mouth feel. Yuck. Disgusting. These are pretty. I just think the container is pretty. I kind of like how they're just kind of like blobby. <laughs> I want to try their lipsticks. I have the Terracotta Latente Fab Foundation. Love it. I like it. I like it as my full coverage option whenever I decide to go full glam, full beat. But most of the time I do things like what I have on my skin today. I have a skin tint on. So this is more my season than that. Steez. I revoke it. I did not put them out there. It's my stuff. My shit. I really like a skin tint. Anyway, that's not about lip oils. I don't really care about lip oils. I think everyone's lying to us. I don't find them nourishing. I find them messy. I don't like them. They all kind of smell and feel gross on my lips. I'm just like I'm not a lip oil person. So I wouldn't spend $40 on a lip oil. I tried a lip oil from Sigma recently and it just felt like lip gloss. And then other people in the comments were like, no, it's really nourishing. And I was like, that's a, it's not oily. It's not an oil. So I will not be participating in Guerlain's nonsense here, but I do like that the cap is just kind of like, you know, it's like how I feel on the ins inside. Yesterday I took a fragrance quiz and it asked me to describe the shape I am inside. I picked Pentagon because I really didn't know what else to do. If you say something about me being circular, I will block you. Earth Decay is releasing a new foundation, the Face Bond Waterproof Liquid Foundation. I might be getting this in PR. I did get an email from Urban Decay and I picked a shade, but it didn't really tell me what I was picking it for. I have to assume it was this. Let me tell you a little bit about it. 40 shades, foundation, serum, and setting powder all in one. Kind of sounding like that thing that Danessa Myricks released recently, the primer that's like an oil powder primer thing. It's giving the same energy. Buildable, medium coverage with a natural finish, and 3% niacinamide, setting powder, ingress. I don't know if that's a a type ingress absorbs sweat and oil ensuring that it lasts up to 24 hours who cares sweat and waterproof patented precision dropper interesting i do feel as though in my mind whenever something is described as matte i'm expecting lots of coverage thick formula and it does appear that this formula is going to be it's going to be coming out of a dropper which is interesting so my mind immediately goes to the fenty ease drop this sounds like it's going to have more coverage i'm like curious about it one thing that Urban Decay tends to do pretty well is have a pretty good shade range. It does appear to be a very good gradient between the 40 shades. It looks like there's deep options, fair options, light, light, medium, medium, deep tan. Looks like we kind of covered, although from 33 to 34, it looks like it goes lighter and then deeper again. Don't really know what that's about, but I do think that that's something Urban Decay typically does well. I think Urban Decay recently, or in the past couple of years, has been kind of having a complexion crisis. Like, it doesn't really know where it wants to land. When I worked at Sephora, I worked there from 2017 to 21, their foundation went from, like, the original, I guess it, maybe it was called All Nighter or something like that, and it went from that to the, the one in the rectangular tube, and then that got discontinued not that long after I released, like, it was always on sale it kind of got discontinued i thought that was actually a great foundation really easy to use very thin foundation formula like i did like it at the time with my preferences i thought it was a good foundation i like a little less coverage now i still think it's good for people who would be into that sort of thing they released the concealers and then the concealers got downgraded pretty quickly from being like a full range of concealers that matched all of the foundation shades to like much less concealer and then like the foundations just kind of went on sale and disappeared and then they tried doing like a skin tint and i feel like no one really talked about that they're really having a hard time finding their footing about like where they fit into the complexion world and i think if they would have just kept their old foundation now that we're swinging more into soft matte and satin matte finishes i think that their old foundation would have been really great and if they just did a really strong re-promote with the right people that could have helped them maybe this is a better formula than even that was so hopefully it is they did reach out to me and i was like hello <laughs> It hasn't come, and I don't know when this launches. Maybe it already launched. This is a sneak peek, but this was posted February 29th. If I don't get it, whatever. I, I won't buy it if I don't get it. And that's not, it's just not a foundation I would have been interested in. Sometimes whenever you get like a new launch, they're very vague about what it might be. I, it's like, I knew it must have been a foundation or a concealer based on the questions I was asked, but it didn't really tell me like what the finish was supposed to be. We'll be curious to even see things about it. YSL is, I think this already came out. And now I'm confused because someone asked me to talk about another thing with YSL. So let's talk about these first and then I'll talk about the other thing that someone notified me about. So YSL it has released the Love Shine Lip Oil Slick. So it's a solid lip oil. It comes in a couple of different cute shades. 
I don't know if any of you follow my friend Sarah of Sarah Rose Beauty, <laughs> but she has been talking a lot about in the last year that like some of the lip products that she wears will irritate her throat. And I never really had that experience applying a lip product, but recently I was wearing my beloved Candy Glaze and it started doing that to me. Now, you'll see this in my empties at the end of the year. I talked about this because I did empty one of my candy glazes. It just started happening with that recently. So I won't, well, I think this is a cool release. And I think if I were to do a lip oil, I think I would like it in a solid. I don't know why my brain's like, yeah, of course I would like it. But it does look very similar to the candy glaze packaging. So that's kind of annoying because it's like, I already have a couple candy glazes that I can't tell the difference of. Now there's a whole new formula in a similar packaging. How am I supposed to know what's what? It's very tough. It's very hard. It's very hard being me and like trying to like, you know, navigate my own beauty, my beauty drawer, my own lipstick drawer. How am I supposed to know what's what if everything looks the same? Okay. So YSL, buy that. But I now fear that YSL lip products are going to give my throat that scratchy scratch. I don't think it's an allergy. <laughs> like it might be an allergy, like a very slight allergy to a very specific ingredient. Sarah has, I don't think she has like a video on it specifically, but she's kind of been talking about it in a lot of her videos recently. And I'm, I'm now starting to have that effect with the candy glazes. So I don't even know if the candy glazes are going to stick around in my, like my drawer for very much longer. I might keep the scenic brown one and then get rid of the other two maybe give them the tiff because they they do have my lips all over them and then someone told me that ysl is rebranding and so ysl beauty it's the beauty it's not the ysl overall the beauty page wiped its page clean since i filmed this ysl has posted more and on the ysl beauty page it's now just kind of like showing Dua Lipa and these lip oils, and that's kind of it. So <laughs> the lip oils are post rebrand, but it does look kind of exactly the same as it did before. So I'm not really sure, not really sure what we're going for here. It seems like they're confused because I'm confused. Maybe we will get rid of that squishy leather packaging because I would really like that because I don't love that packaging. We'll find a, a we'll, new, we'll find a new place to land. So we'll see where YSL's going with its rebrand whenever they let us know. I'm not a journalist. I can't do a deep dive. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. These are pretty cool, actually. NYX released the Buttermelt Bronzer, $10 each, and it comes in eight shades. They are sold out at this time, or they were sold out really quickly, because I, I kind of was watching them. So when I look at these. It's kind of like NYX kind of got the hint of undertone. They really went all in on rosy. They didn't really go in on golden. They are all rosy and like seven is just straight up red. Some people will like as a bronzer with deeper skin, but not everyone. I'm gonna give credit to Phytosurgeons for this because I do feel as though they did that and we all loved it and then other brands were like, there was like bits of this beforehand. Like Gucci has some pretty nuanced bronzers. As you know, I really love the Gucci bronzer in Fair. It's nice and rosy, really pretty, looks really great on my skin tone. Jones Road released their bronzers and they kind of looked really pink too. And people were really into that. And I feel like NYX was like, heard, we're just going to make pink bronzer. Now, when I looked at these at first, I thought they were releasing like nude blushes because I know that nude blushes are kind of on trend right now. We're not wearing as much blush. Blush comes, blush goes. When I got into makeup, blush wasn't really very popular. Now that I'm into blush, I don't think I'm going to like move away from it. I've already been into nudie blushes. When I want that, I wear it. You know, I'm, I'm not wearing anything too obvious today. Yeah, I'm wearing Heliotrope from Rose Ink, which is kind of like a nothing blush. I know about nude blushes. So I thought these were blushes at first. And I was like, cool, a bunch of nude blushes for a bunch of different depths of skin tone, which is one thing that we don't often get. Like we saw in Khaki's collection where she like did like a light, medium and deep. A lot of mainstream brands aren't doing like the medium and deep so well when it comes to these kinds of nuances. So it's nice to see a drugstore brand and a mainstream brand releasing something like this. I find this promising. I'm gl I'm kind of happy that they're sold out. It does seem like this is something that we've been craving for. Like we saw it with Phytosurgeons with their bronzer release. It was like the golden undertones, the rosy undertones. Like I just feel like this is a moment where I'm seeing a major brand paying attention to what's happening on like the indie scene. We all know this. Indie makeup will do something really cool. And I feel like it gets really appreciated, but then the major brands kind of like play it off sort of like no one needs that. And then if they do it, then it sells out and they're like, oh, maybe people really do want this because I don't think people who aren't in the makeup world like you and I might be because you're sitting here watching me talk about new makeup releases. So you're interested in this kind of thing. And I'm interested in it because it's like work that I do. I just think that 
people who are not paying attention to the, the beauty world won't know that things like this are available to them until a mainstream brand does it and sells it to them. And I think it's great that NYX did that. And what's also great is like NYX clearly did it in its own formula. Like I would be really bummed if someone did like a, a like a creamy, balmy, I don't even know what to call the phytosurgeon's formula. I don't want people to dupe phytosurgeon's formula, but I think it's great that they might have seen. I'm not saying that Nick stole the idea from Fighters Rooms, but like it's nice to see things like this continue to happening and be offered at varied price points with different availability to different people. However, if you are watching this and you don't know about Phytosurgeons bronzers and you like a cream, creamy, it's a different kind of formula. But if you like that, if you like the idea of this and this is sold out, try Phytosurgeons. Their bronzers, I think, are like maybe 20 ish dollars. It's Canadian pricing. So if you live in the US, it's like it fluctuates, but like check it out. They have some really great bronzers in, in, the, in a beautiful range. Like there's different depths. Check it out. I won't be buying this, but I celebrate it. Okay, so the next thing, this, I, li <laughs> I literally thought whenever I, this came across my screen, I thought it was a sneak peek and it was in grayscale. It's not. It's just a palette. It's more cool tone. So this is from Beauty Bay. This has launched on the 26th of February and it's their smoky eyeshadow palettes. Now, I think they made an uh-oh. They released a nine pan version, a 16 pan version, and then a way too many pan version. 42 pans. Beauty Bay, I have a question for you. Why would I ever buy the 42 pan one? A uh, gray tone. <laughs> and I just said I, I love a cool tone. What does the 42 pan do? that the 16 pan can't do? And then what can the 16 pan do that the nine pan can't do? There's absolutely no reason anyone should be buying the 42 pan one. You could do whatever you want. But all that says to me, if they need to release that much stuff in a grayscale, it means that the brand does not think you are skilled enough or does not believe in their formula being blendable enough for you to get varied looks with just a few different types of grays, like going from white to black. A very skilled person only needs a white and black to do a grayscale look on someone's eye. You dip into both, you you get different brushes to get different levels of pigmentation, you build slowly, like you can really do that. <laughs> but what I'm thinking, I've never tried beauty based formula, so I'm speaking out of my butt here a little bit, but I'm reading. What I'm seeing is, oh, beauty Bay. Their formula isn't good enough that you could only do this with their white and black. So they're like, you need actually 42 of our shadows to even do a good grayscale look. That's how I read into it. And we talked about this, if you know, if you've been here, we talked about the Xenon palette and from Natasha Denona, and I even felt that palette had too many shades in it. It had a lot more texture and a lot more like you know, sparkles, and you might be looking for that. However, I'm gonna guess that you probably have some sparkly <laughs> gray shades, uh, silvers and stuff like that to, to, to do with the nine pan. I just think that the nine pan is the only thing that isn't a joke in this collection. You just don't need 42 pans of this. The 16 pan one, you might, you know, sure, maybe there's a little more texture there to free to play with, but it's just like a nine pan should really do for any one of these kinds of looks. I have a nine pan from LH Cosmetics, which is gray. And I think they did a really great job picking <laughs> picking out all of those things. And there is a yellow shade in it that is like a weird kicker, but it turns blue on your, well, it doesn't turn blue on your eyes, but there's a blue flip in the, the yellow eyeshadow. And when I put it on my eyes, all you see is the blue. There is yellow, but oh, most of the time all it reads is blue. So I'm just saying, there are other brands that have nine pan gray palettes that I would go first. I would get the Viseart Cool Mattes. I would probably get the Makeup by Mario Neutral Mattes palette before I would go with Beauty Bay, even though it wasn't completely gray. I would probably buy the Xenon palette, but again, I just think I don't need a whole palette dedicated to this more than nine pans. That's my soapbox. I am gonna keep standing on it because I have more sass to throw at you. I'm wearing a little bit of half magic on my face today. My friend Andromeda, who's S Andromeda on <laughs> Instagram, they sent me some half magic stuff because I've been deeply interested in half magic beauty, but I hadn't, you know, really got what I needed from the imagery, but I did swatch some of it in person recently and I'm impressed with it. And now I'm, I'm wearing some of it. I didn't buy this. this again, this was to me. Guess what? It's much more impressive as a brand than it looks online. I don't think they do a really good job selling the fantasy. So they released three glosses and three eye paints slash liners. I think it's a nice little release. The thing is, it's not really super exciting because it's just kind of like two shade extensions. However, if there's a good product... <laughs> I would much rather have shade extensions in that product than launching a whole new product. There are a lot of brands that I like 
that do this. Victoria Beckham being one of the brands that I think really does this the best, where it's like, we have this beautiful formula, you would like it in a new shade. And then they release like a handful of new shades every now and then. They don't all stay permanent, but like, you know, there's some room to play. I like that. I like that half magic is just kind of like, okay, so we just, we need a pink sparkle now. We need a little more of a gray sparkle now. And it's all very effective. So like I, the stones are half magic. And then the liner, the liner going across my lid. And then I also have the black and taupe lip liner on with a gloss on top. I think it's fabulous. So I think I am gonna buy some stuff to round out like a full brand review now that I have a little bit and I'm like, okay, I'm like a little bit excited about this. So stay tuned. Subscribe. Actually, let's take a moment. Subscribe to my channel. If you made it this far, you might as well. I've been waiting to talk about this one. So this is already out. It's the Natasha Denona Hypernatural Face Palette. $68. This is the ugliest thing I have seen in a long time. It's so hideous. It's so ugly. I can't believe I saw some of my makeup loving friends celebrate this and buy this. Like, I think this is so bad. As you know, <laughs> I say this every time we talk about face palettes or like face shades being released with the eyeshadows, it doesn't make sense unless you do multiple. And so I think Natasha Denona was like, Tom's not going to come for me if I do a split, a split pan, a split pan of contour bronzer so we can celebrate more people. And I will also do it with the blushes. Oh, it's so gross. Okay, like, oh, I hate it. First of all, Natasha, if, if that was what you were thinking, I have some news for you. No, 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 no. Nope, I still hate this. <laughs> Problem number one, not everyone can use those contours and bronzers. It's just a fact. And I know you're gonna be like, well, I can't, can't make a thing for everyone. You could have made two, maybe three. Light, medium, deep. If you're gonna do this, I need at least three. I would like to see four. Or you release one palette and you, you can get the option. There are a couple of indie brands that do this thing whenever they release a palette. It's like they have some transition shades in there that are not gonna work for all skin types. So you can pick the deeper one. <laughs> and we could have maybe have seen that here. It would be beautiful to see a major brand maybe dabble in something like that for inclusivity's sake. The blushes, they're pink. Ew, like why, why hypernatural and it's like pink? What? No? And the split pan of it all. Now, I do have, I think I only have one product that has a split pan. It is the Bronzing Big Five from Victoria Beckham. And I don't really love that that's a split pan because I want it to be all the one color and I begrudgingly use both of them. I love that thing, but I also have that problem with it. There's two split pans and don't even, don't, if you try to come into my comment section and be like, what about Hindash's palette? That's a gradient, bitch. Get into it. Use your eye. Now, if we cover up that top part, really beautiful sparkly five pan in here that I find pretty intriguing. However, it, the, <laughs> the the blush and bronzer section of this palette really just explode, explodes. And I think the other thing that really frustrates me is that when Natasha first launched, correct me if I'm wrong, I swear to God, when she first started launching these glam palettes with face and eye products in them, wasn't there two options? Wasn't there like a light and a deep option or light, you know, like there were two options for as far as like skin tone goes. And sh she's just dropped that as a concept moving forward. I've got a big bag of crabs there. I wanna put them in my mouth for ya. So when we talk about the eyeshadows are pretty. And I will say having tried the Yucca palette last year, the new textures that Natasha has been introducing have been really great. So it's like a bummer to s that that's how I have to access those form like like some pretty colors in that new formula. I really wish Natasha would I know she has some singles, but I wish we would celebrate like maybe have like a refill option where like if I use a shade all the way up, I could just like buy that shade. Would be nice. Would be nice. Just a thought. I don't know. I wouldn't want to have to buy a whole new palette just for one shade. Pico Milano <laughs> released their spring collection called Days in Bloom. And it has a, a, every Kiko release has like a, a million and a half things in them. But I really wanted to look at the packaging specifically of the powder products. So there's like a face palette and then there's two eyeshadow palettes. Is that not giving like Shantikai? It's giving Shantikai. It's like beautiful flowers on the outside. 
And I'm sure it feels just as light as luck <laughs> as Shantikai packaging is. I've never tried anything from Kiko. There are a couple of things that have been specifically recommended to me from their main brand. Question. Where do you buy Kiko Milano? Just from their website? Is it a US brand? <laughs> Where? And it's okay if it's not. But just like, I feel like everyone talks about Kiko as if I should have stumbled into Kiko at some point organically, like at the store, like I would be at the store and be like, oh, there it is, Kiko. I should know about Kiko. Like, who is she? I didn't know about her, but there she is. No, like, I just feel like, I just feel like people are like, oh, you don't know? You don't know about Kiko? It's like, well, I really don't. Every now and then I see releases from them, but then I don't even see people talk about them after the releases come out. So I'm not really sure who the market is for Kiko. And it probably is wherever they originate, like wherever the brand, you know, is from. Maybe? Because there was someone who told me about something that was very similar to Barba Papa in their range, their permanent range. And I'm like, what is their permanent range? <laughs> Where do I find it? And all I could do is, you know, simply search for it on the internet. But you know what happens is at Kiko, because I just don't know her, I forget about her. And so by the time comes whenever I might be thinking about making a makeup or just Kiko, gone. On. Anyway, I just wanted to point out that those palettes look like Shantakai eyeshadow palettes, and I just think that that was on purpose. Okay, Gucci is releasing a cushion foundation. The cushion debute designed to deliver up to 24 hour hydration. The lightweight foundation is enriched with high reflection index oils, black rose oil, and mineral powders that create a luminous finish while protecting the skin from antioxidants. Has SPF 20, housed in a pink, pale, refillable compact featuring a lion pattern surrounded by a wreath of flowers finished with gold details a vintage floral scent $51 each and available on sale for just I don't maybe it's not coming to America so cushion foundations historically have bad shade ranges and I do think that that is something to do I feel like cushion foundations are more popular like in an Asian market so I feel like the ones that like make it here always have a bad shade range but like luxury brands always have like <laughs> cushion foundation that comes in like two shades. Shantikai has a pretty bad shade range in general, but like their cushion foundation comes in like some shades. So when this was released, I feel like the shade range is not great, but like better than a lot of cushion found cushion foundations are like almost like almost never have like any kind of deep shades. Also, cushion foundations tend to have lighter coverage. So I do feel like they are a little bit I'm saying a little bit. A little bit more flexible. I do think the thing about whenever you're talking about something that has lighter coverage, the undertone has to be kind of good. Because if the undertone is off, then it looks like something's just wrong with your skin. Like it doesn't look like you put on the wrong shade. It's just like something's a hair off. Anyway, I don't really like Gucci's foundations. I tried one that was enough. So I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I have my blush. I have my little lipsticks. And that's it. Um, good. Now, that's not to say I won't ever try something from Gucci again, but like, this foundation can keep it. <laughs> I don't, I'm not interested. Okay, so the Sephora sale is coming soon. It starts at the beginning of April, April 5th for Rouge, April 9th for everyone else, and Sephora collections 30% off. I've done some videos on not shopping the Sephora sale. Sometimes I wonder, like, what else could I say? So I think I am going to do another video this year. Last year, in the fall sale, I asked specifically what I needed to talk people out of. And I might do that again. Like, what's popular? What what can we reason ourselves out of? All I will say is, like, just I'm just saying, if you don't have money to spend on the sale, then just skip it. And I just, I mean that. Where we are in the world right now, and I'm sorry, we're going to have to like, have a little bit of conversation. Where we are in the world right now is, like, pretty scary. <laughs> just pretty scary. And I just think that you should hold on to your money. So if you don't have the money for like frivolous purchases right now, don't make any. I'm not trying to, you know, bring down anyone's joy. I'm just saying like right now specifically, maybe the Sephora sale saving 10, 15 or 20 percent is shouldn't you, it might not even be worth it for you, even for a little treat, even for a little treat. I have a thing that I am going to purchase during the Sephora sale. I'm gonna buy one thing. I already know what it is. And we'll talk about that in that future video. But like, you know, and it is just only 20%. And also think about, you know, if it's important to you to know where your money's going, maybe do a quick Google. Too Faced, <laughs> I actually like these. And this is in Europe. I'm, I'm Maybe they'll come here. Born This Way mini eyeshadow palettes. There's a warm ember nudes and a cold smolder nudes. I've heard about the regular size of the Born This Way eyeshadow palettes that they, the first one was really good and then the second one wasn't as good. So who knows about the formula of these? However, I just, I feel like this took some thought from Too Faced. It was like, what is a mini palette that people would be into and could sell well? I just think that they did a really 
really good job curating little palettes. Now, I would never buy it from Too Faced. I had a Too Faced eyeshadow palette one time. I got it in gratis when I worked at Sephora and the mattes weren't as good as my Viseart one. So I was like, not, and it was like the peach mattes palette, the matte, and it was like, Nothing about this inspires me. Tangent time. Tangent story time. When I worked at Sephora, <laughs> when I worked at Sephora, sometimes brands would do competitions like in your region. And Too Faced ran a competition. Whichever store could sell the most Too Faced over like a weekend, would we would all win the Coco Contour palette. And I'm not normally motivated to sell from a specific brand. However, Too Faced's Born This Way multi-use concealer is excellent. It's not really my gig anymore. Like it's much, it's like full coverage. If I bought it now, I would probably just wear the concealer as foundation, like lightly applied all over. I still think it would be beautiful. But for high coverage glam, it would really do that. And at the time when we were running this contest, that was what was in fashion. That was what everyone was like looking for. I personally <laughs> was the reason that we sold enough Too Faced where my whole team won Coco contour palettes. So I just want to say Too Faced, you're welcome. Everyone else, I'm sorry. <laughs> They were not good palettes. They were not good. And they were always sold out. That Coco Contour palette. It smelled like Coco. And I don't really like my face products smelling like things like that. Blech. Gross. Let's talk about Nomad. <laughs> Nomad Cosmetics. They released the Verdant Wild Beauty palette. A spectrum of Irish greens and from soft moss and lush bogs to emerald gems and rich glens. Sprinkled with sea blues and neutral touches of limestone, fat truths, and golden flowering plants. It's 18 pans, costs $49. It is not limited edition, so it will get restocked if it sells out. And they say up to 12 months that they'll do that. I love the idea of brands really letting us know how long a palette might get restocked. So it's like not limited edition, it will get restocked. Don't worry, we'll let you know whenever we plan on stop selling it. Love that. I think all brands should do that. And I think we should be very specific about what limited edition means. Like, we're going to restock it for the next six months. And then at that six month mark, we're not restocking. Like, I just think that's smart. It allows people who have to be more conscious with their money about where their money goes. If they want to save for it, they like know they can save for it. Like, gives them a little bit of a timeline. And that way, they won't feel the pressure to buy it immediately. So I will say props to you, mama. Like, I like that. That's great. I think we should all be doing that. All brands, take note. I love that. Um... <laughs> no <laughs> cosmetics. Uh, nothing that they've done has ever really done it for me. I think one of the reasons that Nomad never really sings to me, it does seem that often they are doing this 18 pan structure, which makes sense. Like most brands, if they release mostly eyeshadow palettes, the format's kind of the same. So you can like have a brand identity. So understand that. But that's like six shades too many for me. I said recently that I think I get overwhelmed by eyeshadow palettes, which I think is the truth. And I don't think I really clocked that until recently. Having that many eyeshadows in front of me, I feel like I need to use more than I actually do to make a look. Like most of the time I'm doing a look in three shadows, two mattes, one shimmer. Sometimes I'll do three mattes if I feel like things aren't blending or like I think I could work a third color in. I don't know. There's something about like 18 pants, 12. Like It's just a little overwhelming. But I also feel like past 10 shadow <laughs> eyeshadow palettes, it's filler. It's like whenever <laughs> RuPaul's Drag Race casts 16 queens in a season, it's like, I'm only going to care about four of them maybe. And so that's like the thing here. It's like, I might care about a couple of these shadows, but also I don't know how to properly describe this. And this is, I, I need to be very specific and clear here. This is no shade to any content creator who receives PR from this brand or any brand. That's, it's not the point. I will say when this palette launched, every single video that went up that day of people I subscribed to in the beauty space was this palette. And I don't know why, but that really made me go, I don't want that. It left like a little bit of an ick in my mouth. Now, I understand that's promotion. This is a small brand. That's great for them. It's getting the word out to many more people. However, I'm not sure that I know off the top of my head another content creator who's purchased a palette from Nomad Cosmetics. And I'm not sure that I've ever re received feedback in my comments that anyone of my subscribers has bought from Nomad Cosmetics. So I just like, it's not that I don't trust people's reviews, but like sometimes, it, it, just like you should be doing with me whenever I review something that I got in PR, I, it's like, would, it, would they really spend $49 on that? Because I just wouldn't, I wouldn't spend $49 on this. 
or any of their other color stories. I'm not trying to come for this brand because I have also seen other indie brands do it too, where like on launch day, it's just... <laughs> all, all, everyone I know posts a video about it because they got it in PR. And as a consumer of beauty content and beauty products, I could see how that would be a little bit of turn off for it because it, it is to me. So I just want you to know if that's how you feel. You're not alone. And as a content creator too, I understand th that content is going to get most of its views in that first day when it's launching because people are looking for information about it. It just, it doesn't, it's like something about it doesn't ring true. I love green eyeshadow. So I feel like we should really break it down. Not this kind of green. I like green that has like a little, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but that's the green I like. The greens in it. Greens that like would show up in your poop if you were sick. Greens that would show up if you threw something up. Like those are the greens that I'm really into. And these greens are like fresh, clean, crisp greens. Queens, greens. <laughs> Nothing but greens. I could be the witch. I'm the witch. You're the world. I'm the witch. I'm what no one believes. I'm the witch. Broadway. Hey, Broadway, call me. Let me be the witch. Task me. I don't even a Broadway girly. I won't even be annoying about it. I'll take it seriously, though. Anyway, this isn't for me. <laughs> I could just said that, but. It doesn't even really remotely tempt me. However, again, I just really want to emphasize that I really appreciate that the brand is being very transparent about how long this will be available. Love that. No hate to Nomad. It's just like what I noticed, okay? Lauren, Lauren, Lauren. <laughs> Lauren, what are you doing, girl? You're, you're a crisis, girl. Lauren, Lauren. Uh, <laughs> so they're releasing the new Ultra Blur Talc-Free Waterproof Translucent Pressed Setting Powder. And they released it in one of those compacts that has the secret compartment underneath. And I hate that. It comes in three shades, whatever. Blurring, finely milled, talc free, blah, 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 blah. Soft map. Lauren? Lauren. <laughs> Lauren. Stop it. You're a menace to society. Stop it. Baby. Baby. I don't know who hurt you, Lauren. Lauren. You. You gotta stop, Lauren. <laughs> you know what you did. Last year, Lauren, you released a free powder. Um, that was so shiny that it made me look oily when I applied it. So it was a little bit confusing. It's a little bit confusing. Could have been a soft highlight. You really set the gold standard at one point when it came to loose powder. It, and that was a different time, but it's a cult classic for a reason because we all know it's good. And like sometimes we go back to it. Sometimes we like to travel with it. We all know about the Laura Mercier loose setting powder that just took the world by a storm in 2016. You did that. Good powder. It is more versatile than people give it credit for. People just think about baking with it, but it's like, no, it's like just a pretty powder. Like it's not my favorite powder anymore, but like it's a good powder. Like value for dollar, they do give you a full ounce and cost per ounce is not as expensive as a lot of other powders. Just Throwing that out there, okay? Just gonna, I'm gonna celebrate you for a second, okay? But ever since then, you, you and your powder releases have just felt desperate. You've released so many weird powders that I think at this point, I don't trust you. Everything about this powder being the ultra blur, but wasn't the last powder like described the same and it surely didn't do that. I just don't trust what you say to me. And it's weird because we used to only trust you for powder. And then now you've done this weird thing where you make me just not trust you anymore. Lauren, Lauren, things are looking scary for you. I'm scared. I'm scared for you, not for me. I'm not buying this because I've been burned. I've been scorned, okay? <laughs> Lauren, uh, you can have your name back whenever you deserve it. And you just haven't been deserving it lately, Lauren. Uh, try again. <laughs> Gross. Don't buy this. This was really briefly sneak peek. Celine. Celine. The very expensive luxury brand is going to be releasing makeup next year. It's like Marc Jacobs. We're just kind of waiting. Don't worry. I'm just going to wait. You know, I'll just wait. I'll just wait. We'll see. I'll care about that in a year, whenever it comes out. But right now, I mean, I, I just think there's no point in like, even trying to like, queer sides about it. Like, I don't even know what it could be. This is such a stupid thing to end on. But Stila, who? Who's she? They're releasing the Heaven's Hue Hydro Illuminator. 
a liquid whipped sheer face enhancer that instantly boots. Instantly boots. She boots. That's boots. Boots the house down, mama. Oh, grr. straight people. <laughs> Hi, what are you doing here? Sometimes I wonder. Are you well? Call your therapist. I can't read. That's really what I want. Instantly boosts radiance for dewy, glowy, hydrated skin. <laughs> Versatile, blendable, and buildable for a dewy glass skin finish. I just want to take a moment, Stila, and celebrate you. <laughs> you were worried. Stila, you were worried. You were like, oh, God. What are they going to say? What are they going to say? You released a liquid highlighter that doesn't have a puff ball on the end. And I think that's great. That's all. That's all I've been asking for. I said, you can release a liquid highlighter. It doesn't have to look like Charlotte Tilbury's. I just feel so refreshing. And it's also not in packaging that looks like the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood filter for a flawless Hollywood glow finish filter finish sparkle finish. It's not that either. You know, I just love to see it. <laughs> and it's okay. Is it the most exciting release? No. But at least Stila wasn't like, we're chasing a trend. Because that's what every other brand is doing. They're like, if we make anything, it has to look like the most popular other thing in the in, in the world. If you make a high quality product in packaging that doesn't look like someone else's packaging, people will buy it. They just have to know about it. And that's the thing. They're, every other brand is just relying on not even duping the formula, but like duping the packaging enough to make you think that is an alternative to that thing. Yeah, but it's not because it comes in the puffball squeezy tube. It's because it's the same kind of product. A liquid blush is a liquid blush. A liquid highlighter is a liquid highlighter. The vehicle for which you apply it does not <laughs> make it better or worse. Sometimes it does. Like if your formula doesn't work in that kind of packaging, then that's a problem. I'm just... <sighs> I'm just saying, I'm just happy to see a liquid highlighter come out that isn't one of those two things. Not trying to dupe Charlotte Tilbury. I appreciate it. I respect it, Stila. No one shops from you anymore, but you're standing in your druthers and you're like, we are Stila. We are not Charlotte Tilbury. And that doesn't mean much. <laughs> but I respect it. I respect it. I respect it. Anyway... That's going to wrap up Critical Sass. Thank you so much for watching. The next video I post will be called The After Sass, where I put on a face of makeup with the makeup that I already own, inspired by the releases that we talk about in this video. Sometimes I can't do a full face. There are also things I didn't talk about in this video that have come out that I think would be worth talking about in the After Sass with, you know, application and stuff. So stay tuned for that. If you're not subscribed, I would love to have you subscribe. The gig, if you haven't caught on to it, is I'm helping myself and trying to help you build the habit of just being more discerning about what we're buying makeup wise. So I spend a lot of time trying to love my collection as it currently is. I do sometimes get PR. I do sometimes buy things for review. And I try to be as honest as I possibly can about those products and what I think is actually worth it, what I would actually spend my hard earned money on. I try to report back to you. We're really slow beauty over here. <laughs> and when I say slow beauty, it's like sometimes for me to give my final thoughts about something it takes some time. But I also think that's okay because, you know, it just means, you know, that I've really put that thing through the ringer. That's what I like to do. So subscribe if that sounds good to you. Make sure you like this video. Maybe you could share it. I'm great. Maybe you could share it with somebody. Maybe you could share it. The girls who know will know. Okay. I also have channel memberships and Patreon. Over there, I do additional video every month. You know, I'm, I'm trying to incorporate some new things over there. So like, keep your eyes peeled, but I can only commit as much of that as I can. I have a full-time job. I also have this as a job. I also have a life to live that isn't other, isn't my jobs. <laughs> So I try to balance it all. Anyway, I do an additional video over there every month. Um, so check that out if you want to. There's no pressure to join my Patreon or my channel members. It's an option to support the channel. It's not the best way to support my channel. Liking, commenting, sharing is absolutely wonderful. And I appreciate any of the support that you give me in any fashion. But thank you to all my channel members and patrons. You are fab. I've been talking for a really long time. I'm also surprised that my camera is still, it's still going. It's not overheating. It says you could go for another hour. We're not, but it says I could. Anyway, remember to follow your hoat and you'll find me and I'll see you in a video very soon. Go forth, tits out. Bye-bye. Oh, 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 oh. And this is, I didn't get Starbucks. It's just home coffee in a Starbucks cup. Okay? I'm boycotting.
I haven't watched Drag Race yet. It aired last night. If Maya Amon LePage does not go home, I will scream. And I'll stop watching. I do think that that's also true. I don't think I want to see another. If it, she does not go home this episode, I'm not going. And it's not. I just think her story has run its course. But the the producers that wow do not believe that. And I think we're a little bit at odds. It's just like what happened with Silky Nutmeg Ganache in season 11. It's like, she's still here, isn't she? But why? Anyway, also, love Silky. By the way, she, you know, redeemed herself, you know, tenfold. And she didn't really deserve the hate that she got at the time. But I'm not going to get into that here. But I just wanted you to know that I don't think I'm interested in watching. And if it's not this episode, then I'm not interested in watching Maya on the page anymore. But you should follow her and support her and give her your money. I'm not saying that you shouldn't do that. I just don't want to watch her on Drag Race anymore. That's what I want. <laughs> anyway, 